Welcome back to LeMaster Tech, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build a GUI or graphical user interface for your Arduino project inside of a Python program. I'll be making my example today using the Pygame module, but the method we use for extracting data from the Arduino will work with Kinter, Kivi, Pygame, any Python module you decide you want to use to build your GUI. So this is a heavily requested video after my recent video, how to control an Arduino from Python came out. And in that video, we used a lot of the same concepts we're gonna to use today for establishing a serial connection to an Arduino board. But in that video, all of the control and the back and forth we did was on the terminal window. And so then kind of the logical next step is setting up a GUI or graphical user interface to interface with the Arduino from Python. So for today's example, let's take a look at an Arduino project that I currently have built. I have four capacitive touch sensors that each need five volts and ground. And then the third pin is a signal wire going back to an Arduino digital input. I then have 12 LEDs organized in four banks of red, green, and white. They each get controlled by a digital output pin on the Arduino going through a 220 ohm resistor then back to ground and the only other input or output on this project is a 0 to 180 degree micro servo which we need hooked up to an Arduino pin capable of doing pulse width modulation or PWM most of the time these are indicated by a squiggly line on your board and of course this is just an example circuit but if you do have any questions about how I wired this stuff just let me know in the comments below because this is an example and the important part is the Python piece we're going to move fairly quickly through the Arduino code. I'm not going to go through all of the basic setup of establishing LED pins and then setting them all up as outputs. But what I do want to touch on is the important piece, which is sending the data over to Python. And to do that, we need to make sure we have serial.begin and then a baud rate defined in the setup loop. And then the primary way we're going to pass data to a Python script is over serial communications. And so to do that, you could send over a bunch of individual messages with each separate thing that you want, or you could send one block message over as a formatted string. You could also find a way to combine all of your numerical integers into the different characters on a number and you could send an integer or a real. But I'm gonna propose the simplest way to send a lot of data over to Python in one message is a formatted string. And all you really need to know about how my Arduino code works is any time one of the four capacitive touch sensors gets touched, it individually cycles through one of the banks of lights, first turning on the red, then red and green, then red, green, and white, then back to all of them being off. Additionally, each of the four capacitive touch sensors changes the state of the servo by either plus or minus five or 10 degrees. The circuit is really just for fun and to build kind of an entertaining looking GUI for this example. I do plan on using it for some pretty big, pretty cool stuff in future videos, so make sure you're subscribed to stay up to speed on all that. All right, but a quick look here shows you how easy it is to set up a formatted string with all of the data that I want to send over. Because the four states are guaranteed to be a single character, zero, one, two, or three, I'm gonna put those first, and the only variable character thing I'm sending over is the number of degrees the servo motor is, and so I'm gonna put that at the end so I can basically use a very simple, like, parsing logic on the Python side that checks each space and turns that value back into a usable variable on the Python side. Okay, and so really the most important takeaway from the Arduino side is understanding that using the serial.println or serial.print commands just like you would when you're doing debugging on an Arduino project and you open the serial monitor window in the Arduino IDE, that's the same format for sending data over serial to a Python script as well. So you can actually use the Arduino IDE to make sure and the serial monitor tool to make sure that you're sending data the way you expect to be sending data. Assuming that's going good, make sure to change your Arduino IDE to a different COM port or just close it all together. And let's go take a look at the Python side of things, which is obviously why you're here. In Python, we want to import the serial module as well as Pygame or whatever you your preferred GUI package is gonna be. We're going to define our serial COM port, which you can find in your computer's device manager, or you can just check the COM port you were using in the Arduino IDE. So these basic lines of code check if serial data is currently available, and if it's a full row of data, we just store it 
in a data variable. And at this point, that formatted string that we messaged over from the Arduino project should now live in our Python project. And to test this, we can just use the print command and print it into our Python project. So go ahead and kick this on. It'll test the communications and that we're getting data properly really quickly and easily. And you should be getting whatever formatted string data you sent over from Arduino in the console window of your Python project. Now, because right now it's coming in as one big string, we want to turn it back into the usable variables that we kind of started with. And so to do that, we'll make a data parser. Again, we know the format data is coming in from because we wrote the code on the Arduino side. So we don't have to do any crazy checking to make sure it's this or make sure it's that. We know which character of that string is going to refer to what variable. So in our case, easiest path of least resistance is going to be just saying this character of my format string is actually going to tell me the state. I recommend if you're expecting numbers, serial data can get a little funky when you use microcontrollers or hobby electronics. So it's not a bad idea if you're expecting a number to just double check that it's in a list of valid numbers before trying to convert it to an integer so that just one bad message from the Arduino over wouldn't crash your program. Definitely an optional step, but it doesn't really hurt anything to just say, oh, if I'm not getting a number from over there, just quickly substitute a zero. And then other than that, the code is really straightforward. It's saying, I know these characters are going to be these variables. So store them in a list and convert them back to a number for those variables. And so whatever your specific application and whatever data you're sending from your Arduino into Python, this step is gonna look very similar. You want to get all of the data you're sending over into usable Python variables so that when you create your Python GUI, you have that data somewhere living in your Python script. Now it's time for the fun part, which is creating the GUI, creating the graphical user interface from Python. I'm going to do mine in Pygame. I've done a ton of tutorials on the channel on how to make Pygame projects. I've also done some on Kinter and Kivi. So no matter what you're using, if you feel a little lost on the HMI section of it, the GUI section of it, uh, be sure to check out those tutorials on the channel. And again, for my specific application, I'm going to draw 12 simple circles for the LEDs. When they're lit up, I'll draw them red, green, and white, the colors of the LEDs. And when they're not lit up, I'll still draw the circle but I'll make it dark gray. You could just not draw anything when they're not lit up, but I like to indicate there is still light there and it's just not lit up. We can animate all 12 of those LEDs off of our four state variables and a simple for loop. And the only slightly tricky piece to my example here is drawing a realistic looking servo motor that's gonna move from zero degrees to 180 degrees as we click those capacitive touch sensors and change its position. It's still not super hard and some of you might be better at math than me and you immediately knew what to do. At least I had to look up the formula for calculating endpoint based on uh, an origin and the angle between those points. And I had to import the math module so I'd have access to sine and cosine. But honestly, it still wasn't that hard to get a function that would draw a line and the endpoint would be based on a zero to 180 degree servo angle. Okay, and once you have all the pieces in, just go ahead and play around with your project and see the GUI responding to your physical Arduino board. You might notice some slight delay you might notice certain things not updating. Maybe you animated some things wrong and that's all kind of guess and check and just tweak certain parameters and play around with it. But the core functionality of having a GUI in Python that is responding to the state of devices in your Arduino project is now there. And I know as a beginner, this whole project might have seemed a little bit complex, but it's actually a bunch of simple layers stacked up on top of each other. So I hope this video gave you what you were looking for when you clicked on it. A huge thank you to Elegoo for providing providing the hardware seen in today's video. Ligu is one of the top manufacturers of Arduino components and sensors, as well as 3D printers and CNC machines. They make it super affordable and super fun to be a hobbyist maker. And I've been a massive fan of their products for a really long time. So it's super exciting to be partnering with them on the channel. So thank you very much to Elegu for sponsoring this video. As always, a massive thank you to my Patreon supporters, as well as everyone supporting Master Tech on YouTube. That is gonna do it for today's video. Until next time, good luck with your projects and thanks for watching. Bye.